Kia ora, friends. Let me just clean up my campsite. It's messy. <laughs> As per usual. All right, so I'm on day 175 of a cross-country, 48-state America motor camping adventure. Before I wrap the trip up and put my bike into storage for the winter, I wanted to share with you my top 20 items that I found essential during my motor camping trip across America. Um, I'm also going to include uh, my top five items that I wish I had. Hopefully this will help you plan for your upcoming motor camping trip. First up, in no particular order, uh, we've got the solar power bank. So this bad boy, uh, I think is about 40,000 milliamps. It can charge my phone something crazy like 10 times. And it also charges itself in the sun. Uh, and this particular one, which I just got off Amazon, has a crazy strong LED light. Uh, so this is multifunctional, and this one's kind of bulky, so I do keep a smaller power bank in my waste bag. Uh, but this is great to have in case you really get lost and you don't have any other way of charging your devices. Where the fuck is my... Oh, here it is. Okay, number two. This is my Hydro Pack. I've gone through so many different <laughs> variations of water bottles, and this one has come out on top. It is durable. It straps onto the side of my bike. Uh, now I do have a camel pack is, as my secondary water source but this one I prefer because the tube doesn't get tangled in anything, the mouthpiece doesn't get dirty. Uh, it has a bunch of different tie down points. It has endured a, a intense heat of being beside the engine. Uh, it does not taint the taste of the water. That is an important one. Um, it tastes really good. It's even dishwasher safe so you can sterilize this. Uh, it just unscrews and Away you go. Woo, that is tasty. So number three on my list is the Gooseneck GoPro mount. Now, this is not a great example to show you because it's broken. I've got a couple of different ones. It would sit like this. You put your GoPro on top. I'm recording with it right now, so I can't show you. Put your GoPro on top, and then you can clip this onto your handlebars, onto your lights, onto your luggage, and you get some really interesting angles if you are recording your trip. Now, I would have uh, previously recommended you go for the GoPro brand, but as you can see, it's actually not that good. Um, I also got an Amazon version. Now this one is way longer. And the cool thing about this is that you can angle it to get even more impressive um, types of shots. So you can get the whole bike in if you position this correctly. The bummer is that it's not very good quality. Now I have gone through maybe four or five of these on my trip. I so wanted to capture the angles that it was worth me just replacing them each time they broke. The jumper pack. This here will jump your battery if it gets flat. I have had to use this about 20 times in the last six months. I cannot recommend this enough, especially if you have um, peripheral accessories attached to your battery. So for me, I have fog lights and I also run an inverter to charge my phone and things like that. Uh, if I leave my bike on or accidentally put it in park without the key on, I've got about 20 seconds before that battery is unable to start the bike. My next item is my satellite phone. So this is a Garmin inReach. Uh, I use this to um, track where I am at all times. Uh, people who have the link can know exactly where I am. So I give this to my family and friends. Um, I'm also able to use this SOS button if I ever am in an emergency or I find myself having stumbled upon an emergency. Uh, and it also has maps, uh, but more than anything, it is just peace of mind. So this is uh, for a long trip across the country that does have you know, patchy service. I recommend getting one of these. Uh, and you'll see it is on a carabiner. Now this carabiner is clipped onto my waist bag. It is not going to be on the bike or my bag because I might at some point become separated from the two. It needs to be attached to me uh, and my person. You'll see I also have my mace and my keys. Next is my Butler motorcycle maps. So this only applies uh, to people traveling around America, but I highly recommend if you are taking a motorcycle trip to get the corresponding map to the state you're visiting. Uh, these maps are designed to show you the best possible route to take on a motorcycle. Uh, let's do a little close up. So you'll see here, we've got highlighted roads. Anything that's yellow is the best road in America. Red, second best. Orange is third best. This is exclusively how I traveled and navigated myself um, during the first part of my trip where they had maps. Uh, these maps are only covering the most interesting parts of America. So they don't have a map for say, Nebraska, just because there's not a lot of mountains and hills and curves and views. Um, but uh, if you are going to a very scenic state, this is the way to navigate. I got the whole collection. 
Next is my hottie. Hottie stands for hot water bottle. Uh, now this uh, is definitely a staple in any New Zealander's bed on a cold winter night. My one has a little sweater so that I don't burn myself, but essentially when nightfall comes, I'll boil water on my propane stove uh, and I will fill up this. Uh, it's a rubber bottle. I pop the little sweater on and I cuddle it. Keeps you warm all night. It's amazing. Okay, next is rain gear. Wow, I really got hit hard on this trip with rain. I think it's to be expected. These are called, uh, they're called Tingly brand, and they're actually over boots. So I have my riding boots, uh, and I actually put them inside this rubber boot, and it is obviously waterproof. Uh, I love rubber because there's no way that any rain is gonna creep into any fabric crease or anything like that. Uh, this is solid. So I'll put this on over my boot, and then I'll put my rain suit over the top. Now this rain suit, please keep in mind, I've been on the road for six months. It did do a good job, but it is mostly duct tape at this point. <laughs> Get a one piece rain suit. That way there's less cracks for that rain to drip down into. Here she is. So you'll see around the crotch area is where it rips the most because you're sort of, you know, you're high yarding your leg over the bike and rip. There we go. It's the worst possible time for it to happen too. Now the only other thing you'll have to think about is how to keep your hands dry. I bought waterproof gloves and they weren't waterproof. Uh, that is something that is well and truly worth the investment. So next up is compression bags. Now I have a lot of clothes with me crammed into my bag. It's actually kind of incredible how much I can fit. And the secret is compressing them, getting that air out. So in this bag, I have all of my t-shirts, my um, sweatshirts, and uh, they've got two zips. So once you've got all your things packed up, you just zip it closed. This double zip system, it presses all the air out and oh, there you go and that there is the best way to utilize that precious real estate in your bag uh, it also uh, helps you to organize your clothes so I have three of these I got one for underclothes I got one for tops and I got one for bottoms so I'm not digging around through my you know my leggings to try and find um, my tops they're all separate I use suited nomad uh, they've been really good uh, this whole trip except water wipes oh my gosh these are so good so I started the trip using baby wipes and you use this to sort of clean your face clean your body uh, and also you can clean your pots and pans or any utensils you use now baby wipes have got some chemicals in them which I didn't really like the thought of um, so I started buying these water wipes and these are 99.9% .9 water uh, which means uh, a lot safer especially if you're cleaning up you know your coffee cup in the morning or whatever my next thing is a tripod and Bluetooth remote. So if you're traveling solo and you want to capture your adventure, the best way to do this is by setting up a tripod uh, and doing either a self timer or a Bluetooth remote. So you can get these on Amazon. Essentially you push the button and it tells your camera to take the photo. So you can set yourself up in the exact position you want to be in uh, and not have to race back for that 10 second timer. Uh, one thing I will say is that the Bluetooth remote that I got broke pretty quickly. So thanks Amazon. Um, if you got a good quality one, I think it would be well and truly worth whatever it costs. Now I would show you my tripod, but I'm currently recording on it. Um, so just imagine a tripod here. It collapses to about that size. I strap it to the outside of my bags because there's often moments where I want to pull over and capture a moment. I don't want to dig through my bag for my tripod so I keep it handy on the outside. Next up is my chair. I'm sitting in it right now. I cannot recommend this chair enough. You might think, oh, I want to save space on my uh, motor camping trip. I'll just sit on the ground. No, trust me. After a long day's riding, the last thing you want to do is eat your dinner on the dirt. Forget it. This one collapses into a tiny little bag. It's only this big uh, and it's super comfortable. So definitely bring a chair. You will not regret it. So this one is just on Amazon. I think it was like 40 bucks. Um, I love the design. It's sort of like a little banana hammock. A little banana hammock. Wait, that's a... <laughs> It is a speedo, that's not what I meant. It's like a, a hammock, a regular hammock, not a banana hammock. <laughs> you can already see, there is some wild design going on here. All right, that one little guy there needs help. Cool, so the frame is um, really lightweight and it's made of the same sort of style as um, tent poles. And then you just put on this little, um, 
fabric chair cover and boom you are comfortable yeah hello next up is my pack safe oh my gosh it's got my purpose <laughs> okay my pack safe i bought a 125 liter one uh now what it does is it actually sits over top of my main bag and i tighten it and then i um <clears throat> put a lock on it and that means that all of my um my gear my big bag is protected from theft now conceivably you could put your hand through and dig something out but literally that is the size of the thing that the thief can pull out it's not cuttable this helps me to feel peace of mind when i'm going on a hike or i'm parked in a um, public area with a lot of traffic or i'm trying to run into a store really more than anything is a great visual deterrent my next item is my beanie now this here obviously serves as a hat so it keeps my head warm but more importantly i think is that it keeps the sunlight or the moonlight out of my face so when i go to sleep i put this on i pull it down over my eyes and i can fall asleep so quick okay next up is my handlebar bag now i picked this up halfway through my trip uh, that is precious real estate just sitting in front of your handlebars and this is the perfect place to put your uh, inverter if you're charging things so my cigarette lighter is right up on my handlebars this allowed for me to put my inverter and whatever i was charging in the front pouch uh, also you know gopro batteries are charging anything that i need quick access to um, i also have a tank bag uh, but it's a lot smaller so this was just sort of like a supplementary um, place to pop things that i needed to grab quickly built well xfil 7. next up my emergency information so in this piece of paper which is in a ziploc bag and is covered by um, clear tape i have all the most important information that someone would need to have about me should they find me in an accident or unconscious or unable to communicate to them so this has my emergency contacts any allergies any medication my insurance details uh, my blood type anything that i could think of that might be important i wrote down and put it on this visible part of my helmet you need your spare keys you always want a spare key. There is nothing that will bum you out more than losing a key and your trip being delayed or even ruined. Uh, I not only have a spare set of keys on my person, I even stash a ignition key inside my helmet lining. I have a friend who puts theirs inside their brake light. Uh, get creative with it. Next up is a notebook. So you might use this to journal your day-to-day um, -day, um, activities, but for me, because I was traveling across every state in America, I found myself frequently getting recommendations from people. And at first I saw these in my phone and then I realized, no, no, I would need to do a page per state. Uh, so this was really helpful in organizing um, the things that people had told me, where to visit, um, who to speak to, what to eat. Uh, and also I started documenting where I had slept that night. Colorado, so much to see and do. Look at this, Mississippi. <laughs> nothing, nothing. Anyway, I found some cool stuff there. And then we've got the disc brake lock. That there will secure my bike and if anyone came around, you know, sniffing around, trying to, uh, you know, touch the bike, it would sound the alarm. So it always made me feel safe. There it goes. <laughs> it works okay and my last item that i couldn't live without is my waterproof bags everything is waterproof i got stuck in oh an insane amount of rainstorms and a couple of snowstorms and the last thing you want to do at the end of your day's riding is to unpack a bag that's full of water no siree <clears throat> a waterproof backpack all the zips are waterproof and my main bag all waterproof this was 75 liters it was just enough for all my crap yes you could pull over and throw on a cover uh, but who wants to do that mm -mm, not me so that comes to the end of my top 20 moto camping must-have items what are the five items that i wish i had on this trip so I've compiled the list, it's a little bit worse for wear. I wish I had a stronger battery. Uh, I needed something that could handle my inverter, my fog lights uh, at the same time. Uh, my battery was uh, fairly small. I'm not talking about the physical size, I'm talking about the, um, like the 
ampage. The second thing is a louder horn. My gosh, my horn was pathetic. Now, the amount of dare and wildlife that just springs out in front of you along this trip, well, I needed something to blast. Uh, also, <laughs> in Florida, I had many near-death experiences with people just pulling out in front of me. I would have loved to have blasted them a train horn to let them know that I was right behind them. Uh, the third thing I wish I had was a phone mount, something that I could pop my phone on that was visible. Uh, I put it inside my tank bag, which had a clear window, uh, but that would sometimes fog up if it was raining uh, or it would... Um, slip down lower than I could actually see without um, you know having to take my eyes off the road <laughs> the fourth thing I wish I had which to my knowledge doesn't exist is a GoPro with a Bluetooth external microphone my current setup I had my GoPro on a mount and I had a 3.5 mil microphone it was a car microphone uh, plugged in to an external external adapter which was $50 per adapter and I spent far too much money on adapters because they keep breaking plugged into that external adapter and wired into my helmet now obviously that wire was susceptible to being um, snapped to being broken to being burnt to hanging too low that microphone was easily the weakest link now the other problem with having a microphone hardwired in is that when it rains it's not waterproof and I actually had to replace a GoPro because of it so uh, if there was some way someone at GoPro could figure this out uh, how hard is it to have a Bluetooth external microphone can't be that hard anyway I'm waiting for that it's probably gonna be on the GoPro 20 or something okay the last thing uh, I wish I had was heated hand grips oh my gosh my hands froze and as a final musing I think uh, the thing that was the least durable out of all of the things I've carried with me are, are zips. So zips broke all the time. That's something to keep in mind when you're buying gear. Does it have really good quality zips? If not, they're going to blow and it's going to totally bum you out. So my main bag zip broke, my boots, my Harley Davidson boots, the zip broke. These are new boots. Um, my tank bag zip broke. Uh, and my tent, my gosh, these zips, they, they keep trying to break, but I'm, I'm on to them. You know how they split and you can kind of just zip them back into place? They're on their last legs. Definitely after six months on the road, I can say it is far better to spend more money on really reputable gear. All right, well, it has been great having you along for this trip. Um, I hope that you've learned something from uh, my learnings and that will help you better pack for your future motor camping trips.